Hey, Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? Hi. Hello? Yes. Hi. Oh, you um, are? Yeah, it's me that texted you. All right. Uh, I thought you are a, 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 like a man, but it turned to be you are a lady. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, you, in the text you said you used to be Ahmadiyya, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, what do you want so, to tell us about Ahmadiyya? Go ahead. I will leave the microphone yeah, so for you. So, I'll just tell my testimony. All right. Um, before I start, I just wanted to say, um, it says in 1 Timothy 4, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say and the way you live in your life, your faith and your purity. So, I my journey started when I was 18 and people think that I'm too young to know what I'm talking about, but God reveals himself to those that seek him, so I'll start. Um, so it started when I was around 17. I started learning more about um, Ahmadiyya because I was bo sorry, I was born into Ahmadiyya. I wanted to know more about it. I wanted to know what I believed. So I started my research and I found some things that I didn't know were the beliefs that um, were widely held. So the website, alislam.org, is what I was using. And for example, one of the things I saw, um, it said that Jesus traveled to India and died a natural death. Um, he didn't die on the cross, an imposter was put there, and that he traveled to preach the lost tribes of um, India. So when I found that out, I knew that went um, against what mainstream Islam says about where Jesus died. So that really drove me to um, start looking deeper. They also said that his tomb was found, can be found in Kashmir. When I found that out, I said that is a bit problematic because if his physical body is on this earth, then that would disprove mainstreamism because it says an imposter was put on the cross and he was risen to heaven. And that would also disprove Christianity where it says he died and rose again. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do my research. During this time, my friend invited me to church, um, so I started going. And then I reached a point where I said, I cannot continue coming to church unless I make a decision, because it's sinful for me to come here as a Muslim. I need to know, I need to know like what I'm doing, what are my next steps. So my church does an altar call, and during that time, I asked God, I was like, God, if you are there, if what I'm doing is correct, correct, please just give me a sign. I don't care how big, I don't care how small, reveal yourself to me. So I went to, my church does like a hangout thing, so this was back in 2018, and I went and I met a youth leader. The youth leader took me to this youth hangout that they had, and I said, okay, why not, what do I have to lose at this point? I was there and something in me was telling me to bring it up. So I was like to the youth people, oh, I used to, I'm, I'm a Muslim, I'm looking at like Christianity, what should I do? Before I even got the chance to say more about myself, one of the guys that asked me, what type of Muslim are you? I said, oh, you're never going to know. He said, he said I'm going to guess. I said, fine, because not many people know about Ahmadiyya. He said, you're an Ahmadi. I said, okay, that means, like, where did you get that from? Because most people would say Sunni or Shia. Mm -hmm. After he said that, I said, he said to me, do I want a book? I was thinking, I've never met this guy. Where is he going to get a book from? It was a book by Nabil Qureshi called No God But One, Allah or Jesus. So he gave me that book, and literally, it was an answer to the prayer that I just prayed. That book had all the answers to what, what, what the, I was... What the, what the book name again, please? No God but one, Allah or Jesus. Allah or Jesus, okay. All right. So um, I'll place the link from Amazon as well. So that book literally answered all my prayers because I just asked God for a sign. I literally invited him into my heart. I said, God, if what I'm doing is correct, please just reveal yourself to me. So I didn't become a Christian there and then. I read the book. I carried on doing my research into Christianity and Islam. I kept on weighing the, um, both sides. The book is really good at breaking down at, um, both sides of the story. So, for example, there's a chapter on the worldview of God in Islam and the worldview of God in Christianity. In front of the Holy Spirit, he shares intimacy with us. We are his children and it's focused on love. However, in Islam, God is not... Um, uh, God is not three parts. He, he we've been created to te um, be tested. We live focusing on the law, so different things. Um, we're, 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 the way we, we're basically, we, our good deeds is what's being tested, if that makes sense. So we're basically aiming to have more good than bad. So there's no, there's no real relationship. 
So after I found all of that out and I carried on getting to know Jesus, I decided to give my life to Christ. And I just, since then, I've just been trying to get other people to see the truth. I've been trying to get other people to see that Ahmadiyya and Islam is not the way but Christianity is. I mean to that. So, but uh, uh, our sister here, uh, did you hear before that Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he died because of diarrhea? Yes, I did. But it, like, actually, no. The first time I heard it was today because I didn't know that. But even so, that's not something that um, was major to me. It, it was more about the teachings hmm. of Ahmadiyya. But no, actually, so it, sh it should be major. Just, it should be major because, yeah. you see, when somebody claimed to be the Messiah, we, all of us, we can die in any way. I mean, all of us as a human, we can die anyway, right? So that's not the problem, yeah. really. I mean, people, they die by car accident, by fire, by, 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 by. Uh, but when you claim to be the Messiah, the one who healed people by just touching him, right? Yeah. It is not logical to say that the one who healed everybody, he did not heal himself. Yeah. You know? So because he chose the, the person of the Messiah, then he is in trouble. Otherwise, if he chose to be a Christian prince, okay, well, Christian prince, he might die because of the same, you know, because he, he's not claiming to be someone special, right, with a, with a, with a special uh, ability and miracles, no. So when he chose to be a person who is the Messiah, he exposed who he, he is by his death. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, I also forgot to add. So... When I received the book, yes, to the people in the comments, I was born into a Muslim family. My entire family is Muslim. Um, the reason why that specific thing was so special is because the person that gave me the book, he had it for over a year. And on that day, he randomly decided, oh, I'm going to read it on my way home from church. But God used him in a way that nobody expected. He didn't even expect it. He thought he was just picking up a book to read on his way home. So, yeah, it's literally, I just think everyone should read that book. Even if you're a Christian, read the book, look into Nebuchadnezzar Qureshi, because I feel like many people, when it comes to evangelizing, they don't, they, they try and focus on, like, people that believe in God but are not practicing or, like, atheists. No, not many people focus on other religions. That's why I really like what you do, Christian Prince, because you've done your research into Islam and you're, like, refuting it. No, thank you. Uh, you know, see here, I notice that you mentioned the book of our brother, may the Lord bless his soul, uh, Nabil Qureshi. And this is what we say, yeah. that you see, you, you, all of us, we will die. The Bible says, let the, let, let the dead bury the dead. But look, yeah. Nabil, he died, but he's alive. Here we go. We are talking yeah. about him. Yeah. And he was behind saving the, the, our sister here. So even if even he passed away, still he will save people by what he left behind this is why we encourage all of you to do some work because the lord he said from the fruit you shall know them and the fruit of, the, of our brother nabil is speaking to us right now as we as we speak live on air uh, 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 I, I i'm not going to say what's your name in skype i'm going to ask you what about your parents they're still ahmadiyya um yes yeah, so um so when i told so I got to a stage where I was hiding that I was a Christian and my friend spoke to me. At the time, you know in Islam you pray five times a day, there's not really a personal relationship with God like when you pray, you're saying specific words over and over again. So it came to a point where I was learning how to pray as a Christian, it's simply a conversation with God, but people told me to pray the Lord's Prayer. So I was praying the Lord's Prayer and my friend asked me, do you pray the Lord's Prayer? I said yes. He said, do you pray God let your will be done? I said yes. And he said, then you need to tell your family because you can't live a double life. You need to be proud. You need to be always able to defend your faith in Jesus. So I told um, my uh, mum, my mum made it hard, um, a bit hard for me, but it's okay. She's come to terms with it now. And at first my dad disowned me. He said he wants nothing to do with me if that path is the path I'm going down, that he thinks I'm brainwashed, that I have been brainwashed by Nibbul Qureshi and stuff. So yes, my family is still Muslim, but I'm still praying that they see the light one day. Yeah. Well, I, I will be happy to talk to your parents and I will speak to them nicely if you like, even in, in the private, I don't mind. Like if you, okay. if you can tell them, do you like to talk to this person? You know, I will speak to them in a very nice way as if they are my parents, I promise you. Yeah. You know, and I will be happy to talk to them because, you know, I don't blame them for being stubborn and not to listen. Uh, mm. Because this is how they grow up. I mean, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy it's to true. leave. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy to leave at all, especially like when you've grown up and this is all you know. So at first I was hurt, but now I understand. Exactly. Um, my family, my family hasn't turned from me. We're okay now. Okay. But they are still, they are still not Ahmadiyya. It's just, I feel like it was the initial, sh I mean, they are still Ahmadiyya, sorry, they're not Christians, yeah. Hmm. I feel like it was the initial shock. You know, Thank you for your presence. Yeah, do, do you know, the, do you know the, the power of the drop of water? No. Okay, the drop of water, if you, if you have a faucet at your home, let us say in the yeah. backyard you have, a, you have a faucet and this faucet is leaking. Yeah. After a few years of not, uh, let us say you have a husband who don't care, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. he will not fix the faucet. After a few years, you will find a hole in the tiles. Yeah, that's but, true. But, but do you see, do you know how hard the tile is? It's very really hard. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a rock. Still, yeah. a drop of water was able or able to make a hole in it. This is what mm. you can do. You can be the drop of water who can soften a rock. Never give up. Thank you, Array. Yeah, the, you know, I, I have many people who used to, there's a guy who used to open a chat room in Paltok for three years for me, he's a doctor from England. Mm -hmm. He, you know, the, the whole chat room is just attacking me about Christian Prince lying, Christian Prince is is a, is lying to you, he is, he's, not, he's not telling the truth. Three years, non-stop, every day. And then one day, he came to the chat room and he said, everything this guy is saying is absolutely true. I thought he's joking, being sarcastic, because this this guy supposed is an enemy for me. You know what I mean? Like there's no way yeah. he is the last one. I mean, and then I thought maybe this is a fake person using this. Like you know, you can make a name look like it. You know, so and then we gave him the microphone. It was him. Three years attacking me, saying Christian Prince is lying, and then he said I cannot take it no more. Everything he said, I check it out to be to be, to be true. I was lying to myself. I cannot take it no more. I am out of this garbage. So. Uh, people sometimes they they uh, because because the the truth is painful it's not it's not count the truth is not comfortable the truth is it, it hurt you know yeah so it does hurt, yeah. Be because it hurt you you switch to the defense you know mood and your defense yeah. mood says i don't want to leave it believe it even though it's true and then by time either you live the rest of your life in denial lying to yourself or you have to be honest with yourself and you say you know what the truth is ugly i have to accept it yeah yeah well i'm i'm so grateful to have you uh, our sister here and i hope some ahmadiyya will call us and will prove yeah. us wrong but i you know for me uh always i try to present information in a very easy way this is why i'm focusing today in this guy dying by the diarrhea because not only christian i mean not everybody knows what what ahmadiyya teach you know, Ahmadiyya is not too much like their books. Even many people do not know even what the, what the books of Ahmadiyya. They think it's Quran. The fact Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he have his own Quran. You know? He yeah, don't... that's another thing. So many of the things, once I started seeking the information for myself, many of the beliefs that they held, I didn't know is what I should have believed. So unless you go looking, you will never find out. And especially like there's an, a language barrier as well. So because the language um, that they use is Urdu for some of their books and stuff, it makes it harder for those that don't speak Urdu. Yeah, it, just blindly following. Another example, so they tend to do missionary trips. I feel like that's how my family at least became um, Ahmadi. They did missionary trips across West Africa. And because people are giving, you're giving people clean water, schools, etc., etc., it's like they feel like they should follow this as, it's as if god has answered their prayers because they've been met in the physical but it's not just about the physical it's about the spiritual if your spiritual is not c correct then like it's not good yeah you know you mentioned something about a uh, relationship with god did you, did you watch my previous video i made just uh, two days ago no, I haven't. Well, you should watch it because you will see that in Islam, there is nothing called a, a personal or a spiritual relationship with Allah. For Allah yeah. first is not a spirit. How you can have a, how you can have a spirit with a spir spiritual relationship with someone himself is not a spirit. <laughs> you know, it's like a, yeah. like in, in order to connect between two things. Let us say to make it simple. Uh, let us make this the spiritual relationship is like electricity. Okay. Yeah. And this this energy or this power, uh, in order to connect, uh, it have positive and negative, and you know, and it have to be 
going through uh, some kind of, let us say, uh, 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 a, a material which is going to transform, transform or transfer this uh, uh, energy from one to the other. But if the other person, he have no electricity at all, electricity will not go. You, you see, uh, because electricity, in order for electricity to run through, uh, uh, through, through anything, you have to have electron in that material. Like even in the air, there's electron. So in order to, uh, uh, like when we, when the, when the, the energy became so powerful, like what we see in the thunder. So when, when this electron, he, you know, go and when I, when I, when I connect to other electron. Yeah. We need to have two electron. If one of them is electron, the other one will not receive anything. So this, the God of Islam is not a spirit. So how this is spirit who is, I have it, will connect with the someone, he himself is not a spirit, and then we call it spiritual. Yeah. The definition even is even, even silly and stupid, because to be spiritual, I have to be a spirit, I have a spirit, and he have a spirit too. And then we can have a spiritual connection, you know? Like I can yeah. I can say the, the mother, she is connected with her son spiritually, like she feels he is sick somewhere, or she is worried about him, you know? This is a spiritual... Uh, uh, let us say feeling that her son she's worried about him she have a feeling that he, he is getting hurt or something wrong happened to him but he, he is a he have a spirit she have a spirit but a man who have a spirit and a god who have no spirit how they can connect spiritually True. that does make sense yeah it's impossible <laughs> same time the god of islam you know he never connected with muhammad in a spiritual way he sent him always an angel you see, if you go in the Quran, the Quran says, the, uh, the Quran used the word Wahi. Wahi means inspiration. But all of us, we knew that Muhammad never received inspiration. He received a message. How that is inspiration? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's true. Because especially in Islam as well, the um, Quran is seen as the exact word of God, his exact words. But then, this is another point I, I came across during my research. So I can't, I think it was Uthman. He recalled all the Qurans and had them burnt so that they could print a standardized version because um, Arabic was an oral language at the time. It wasn't written down. So when they started writing it down, many different forms were being created. So, but the thing is, there's a hadith that says one of the best reciters said a verse was missing, and that really makes you ask questions about what you believe. Yeah. If verses are missing, if verses are missing, stuff could be added in as well. Exactly, and actually, even the Quran confirms something very funny and stupid. If you remember in the Quran, it says that Allah He caused Muslims to forget the Quran, and He mm -hmm. cause or abrogate. But if He cause and abrogate, Allah will make better Quran. Okay, here you see mm -hmm. that the one who made this verse or you know this this statement. Either stupid or stupid, because why I want to make you forget the verse and I will make something similar or better? Mm. What is the wisdom in this? But Muhammad, because he cannot remember, yeah. But Muhammad, when he said that, he cannot remember what he said yesterday. So we never, you know, when you read that, like chapter two, verse number one hundred six, any any verses we cause to be forgotten or to be abrogated, we will make something similar or better. Now. Why in the world does God, he will make me forget a verse he just gave me yesterday, and yeah, now he will make, make something sense. similar. So what, 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 what are you trying to do? And how... It's literally, yeah, because God is not a God of confusion. The Christian God is not a God of confusion. He speaks clearly. No, no, but not only this. You see, here this is about stupidity. Imagine, imagine you have a car. Let us say you have, yeah. a, uh, you have Toyota uh, Camry. 2020. Okay, so now I'm going to burn your car and give you to, to a Camaro to, to a 20. I mean, why did why why did that? It's, it says similar. So why yeah. why you burn the car to give me the same car? That's stupid. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Same same time, this is Allah deleting the word of Allah. What I mean, why why we're talking about when I talk about the car now, we are talking about the word of God. So why the word of God is deleted by God to give a similar word of the word of God? 
But because Muhammad the fool, he cannot remember what he said yesterday, people just start laughing at him. So we want to cover himself. He says, oh, okay, whatever Allah he caused me to forget or to forgot, how Allah can cause you to forget Quran? And what is the wisdom behind that? Why Allah want to make his prophet forget Quran? Any Muslim can tell us? That's stupid. And then to make it more stupid, he said, I will substitute something better or similar. How Allah will make better Quran than the Quran? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Maybe Allah, he went because, you know, my English is bad. So I will go to a school. I will study English and I will make better, better, better Quran than the Quran I made yesterday. <laughs> 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 All right, sister. Thank you very much for calling. We appreciate thank having you. you and thank we hope you. you're welcome. Good to have you. I'm sorry. One second. Just before I go, guys, if you are looking or even questioning um, about Jesus, I just ask that you ask God to reveal himself to you. He will do it. I mean to that. That's cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye bye. <laughs> so the fool Muhammad, to cover his stupidity, he said that Allah will cause me to forget Quran. But don't worry, be happy. Allah will make similar Quran. Huh. And then I will Allah, or maybe He will make better Quran. Huh? That make it even more stupid. So, so what happened to Allah? Allah like was wrong yesterday, he will make better Quran today? Better or similar? And look, Allah have power over all things. So Allah have power over all things. And the, the, uh, so making me forget the Quran, this is a proof of the power of Allah. Do we have any Ahmadiyya here? <coughs> any Ahmadiyya have something to say? About their prophet who died because of diarrhea and yet he claimed to be the Messiah? All right, we have, I think, somebody. Hello? Hello? Yes, my friend, you are live on air. Are you Ahmadiyya? Nope, I am not. So what are you? Well, I've been listening to your conversations and the way you talk about Islam. And I just wanted to have us to have, you know, a bit of life debate. No problem. So, 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 you, so, you, so you are a Muslim? You are a Muslim? Mm, I'm just exploring the truth anyway. Which is the truth? Islam or Christianity? Yeah, I'm asking you a, a specific question. Are you a Muslim or not? Okay, so why don't you say to me, okay, yes, I'm a Muslim, and that's it. Okay, so what do you want to say I to us? Go ahead. Go ahead. I just answered you, yes. Okay, what do you want to say to us? Go ahead. Yes, what I'm just basically trying to say is uh, the, the Quran, <coughs> from the head to the tail, you keep saying it's full of mistakes, it keeps it's full of mistakes, but sometimes we interpret it. The interpretation sometimes it's funny. Oh, so I said that people, is this really a mistake or you're misinterpreting it? Oh, but I am, I'm not giving my own interpretation. This is your Muslim interpretation. Yeah, but the Muslim interpretation of the 7th to 8th century so? can be wrong. How, how, the one, be wrong. how the one who was more close to your prophet time is wrong and you are the one who never met him, never saw him is right. Well, religion is dynamic. Okay, dynamic. Okay, forget about the interpretation. I want you to see your interpretation. What do you think? Okay. All right. I want. Okay. I want to. Okay, I want to. I want to ask you. Can you? I'm, yes. I'm not going to ask you anything. I'm not going to challenge your knowledge. I want to learn from your knowledge. So, can you tell okay. me what is the proof that Muhammad is a prophet and Allah is God? Go ahead. Well, in the proof that Muhammad is a prophet. Hmm. In the days of old, that's in the days of Muhammad, mm -hmm. people upheld him and people believed that he was a prophet. Come on, there are about almost 2 billion Muslims. Can 2 billion people be stupid? You just told me that the, the Muslim who was in the 17th, 17th century, they were stupid. That you are smart oh, because you learn Islam from the stupid ones. You are a Muslim today because of those people who they are living in the 7th century. And you just accuse them to be stupid for giving false interpretation for the Quran. So you learn from the false, you learn from the stupid Muslims. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm going with your logic, my friend. I'm going with your logic. 
You learned from the one you called them stupid, Islam, and now we are two billion. By the way, how they became two billion? Yesterday they were a billion. You Muslim are like rabbit. You give babies every five, every one week or one billion more. So number doesn't make any difference because we are way more than you. We are more than three billion. Number two, how many Muslims of the Muslims are Muslims? Give them freedom and then we will see. We will find no Muslim freedom left. From freedom, freedom. From okay, let me ask you. Do you, do you, yes. you, do you as a Muslim practice Islam? submission. Yes, I submit to God. No, Islam. Where, where in the Quran says Islam is submission? Where you got this information from? <clears throat> the meaning of Islam is submission. No, who said that to you? Give me the name of the donkey. <laughs> every sheikh, every ustad I know. No, every ustad you know. Every ustad, every ustad you know. Nigeria, is, okay, Nigeria, the only way, the, the only way, my friend, my friend, the only way to say the word submission if you are a person who don't speak Arabic, even if you are a Christian which means you got it yeah. wrong, or you are an ignorant Muslim. There is nowhere in the Quran mention the word uh, submission. Islam means surrender. No, surrender, submission, still the same thing. It's no, just, no, uh, English. no, 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 My friend, surrender yeah. is you yeah. surrender in the time of war. Submission is you do something willingly. But we say in total <laughs> submission to the will of God. No, I'm asking you now. Do you do it willingly or unwillingly? Do you do, do you do it willingly? Do you do the Quran says you you should submit willingly? I'm using the word you use submit, right? Willingly to Allah or unwillingly? Which one? Willingly. <laughs> okay, I want you to read for me. You see, I don't want you now to read the interpretation of the previous uh, scholars because you don't like them, even though they support me. But no problem. I will go with your interpretation. So, okay. what about, uh, you read for me chapter 90, 49, verse number 14. Okay, I'm not with the Quran now, but I trust that you read the right thing. Okay, I'm, I'm, going, like I'm, I'm going to put it for I, you. I'm not that say, no, 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 it's wrong, isn't it? No, nope, my friend, my friend, my friend. Correct, I concede the point to you. My friend, no, I want you to read for me. Chapter 49. And I'm not, at, I'm not on YouTube. I'm talking to you directly from Skype. No problem. You can open in your internet right now. Quran chapter 49, verse number 14. It's very easy. You have internet. <laughs> Please, I told you. Read for me. Please. No, I want you to read. I insist, my friend. CP, you Arabs, just like you said, you Arabs are rude. Hmm. You Arabs are... You Arabs don't, Arabs don't bend. So why you are mis why why wasting my time? You know that we are rude. So let me be rude with you. I want you to read. Yes, there's no problem. Okay. Okay. Can I go? You said uh, Quran chapter what? Hmm. Chapter forty nine, verse number fourteen. Okay. Chapter Quran chapter forty nine. You have to forgive me, the internet is slow over here. No too. problem. Say the word insha'Allah and the Quran, the internet will be so fast. Huh? Say the word insha'Allah and the internet will be so fast. Like Al Burak. Yeah, right. Hmm. Yeah, right. Hmm. Tell me. Come on, when you get it, this is going to work. So, what, the internet is not working now? Whoever still believes in that. Religion is supposed to be dying. Okay, did you open the verse? Did you open the verse or not? Quran chapter 49 verse 14 <laughs> verse 14 chapter 49 hmm. verse hmm. 14. 14 yeah And if you obey Allah, his messenger, he will not deprive you from your deeds of anything. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Okay. So what we learn from this? As long as you don't believe in the interpretation of the Arab before the 7th century, I want you to give me the interpretation for this crazy verse. The Bedouin say we have believed. Hmm. You have not yet believed. But instead, we have submitted. Hmm. 
Ah, submission, you can believe, but you've not yet submitted. It's very possible. <laughs> so, so what the Quran saying? What the Quran saying? You agree? The Quran saying the word, by the way, here sur surrender or submitted is the, replacing the word Islam. We are Muslims. So listen to this. The Quran saying yeah. the Arab they say we are believers. Quran say no, you do not. You are not a believer. You are. You say you you, you can say you are a Muslim, but you are not a believer. So how they are a Muslim but they don't believe? Because Muhammad he forced them. Can the Muslim, one can be a Muslim. But not a practicing Muslim. No, 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 no. This is not about practice. Don't, 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 don't go there. Don't go there. Muhammad he sent them a threat. He said, either you convert or I will kill you. Then they convert, and now he is saying, okay, we believe. Muhammad saying to them, you don't believe. We know that it's a lie. You became a Muslim. So became a Muslim in Islam have nothing to do with believing. Okay, that's your point. Can I make my point? Make your point. Go. Okay. Thank you. Now. The verse said, hmm. "Be believe." You can come openly and say, "I believe in so so and so," but in the reality, you don't submit to your belief. Hmm. So you believe or not? It's just do you believe or not? So those those better men. I can say I believe, but in reality, this is not a question. This is not a question. Those those better men. Those better men. Do they believe or not? They believe. But the Quran say no. The better men say they will believe. You, you, yeah. Allah saying you believe not. What's wrong with you? Do you know how to read? It says the Quran, the Quran in front of you saying you believe not. The Quran says you believe not. Are you saying Allah is a stupid here? See, I want to give you an example. Don't give me an example. The Quran says you believe not. Do you agree with the Quran saying you believe not or you don't agree? I agree. But a second ago you said you didn't agree. You said you said you believe. <laughs> You change your mind in two seconds, my friend, just because the Quran says so. Listen, listen. What listen? A second ago, you just said to me, "No, they believe, but they are not practicing." And now, I, because I showed you the verse clearly, it says, "You believe not." I ask you, which one you believe? But the Quran saying or what you are saying? You said the Quran. Okay, so now you change your mind in two seconds. I mean, good for the woman who will marry you. She can change your mind from 180 degree to 180 degree in two seconds. CP, can I say something? You are saying something. What you are saying to me, proving to me that Islam is a fraud. The man he forced them to convert to Islam, and they believe not. But yes, saying to them, you, you can say we are Muslim, but you cannot say we are believers. So what kind of garbage this garbage is? You force people to say we are Muslims, but they don't believe. CP, CP, one can believe without submitting. Very possible. <laughs> my friend those people don't believe what's wrong with you why you are jumping you are like a vacuum machine lost the tube you know the tube there's, a, there's an engine and there's the mouth of the of, of the machine and there's uh, and there's the tube between them you you are the one who lost the tube there is no tube between them so they believe not how they can call themselves muslim how somebody who believe not allah saying to him say we are muslim but don't say we believe To the best of my knowledge, mm. to the best of my knowledge, I know one can believe but not. Which speak. knowledge you are talking about? What does that knowledge mean? You know, like you have a high school. What does that mean? I mean, when you say the best of my knowledge, I'm showing you Quran, my friend. I'm showing you Quran. I'm showing you Quran. What the best of your knowledge? Are you Prophet Muhammad now? Because this is Quran. Huh? We have not yet, but instead say we have submitted. So Quran, <laughs> yes, letting us know that there's a difference between belief and submission. <laughs> but sub, but the word submission it's something you do from your heart to one you believe in you trust but the, so that's mean they don't believe in Allah okay listen listen do those people believe in Allah do those people believe in Allah yes they believe but they have not submitted hold on why are you are lying again here we go it says you believe not read the verse yes you have not yet we have believed. You better we say we have believed. Are you are you deaf? Are you deaf? The verse the verse says the verse says you believe not. Yeah. You believe not in what? No. Before you say before you he says say you have. Take care. I have no time for kids. Who's next?
<clears throat> Have you ever heard of a stupid garbage cult like this? You cannot say I believe, you can say I'm a Muslim. Islam is a fraud. According to my knowledge, what? who, who are you? According to my knowledge, like when I, when somebody says according to my knowledge, you think like the, oh, this is Muhammad is calling me, and Muhammad now, the prophet of Islam, he have the knowledge. Do we have any Muhammadan? He is an Ahmadiyya, specifically Ahmadiyya, please. He's calling me back. What do you want? I mean, my friend, don't, don't waste my time. What do you want? What do you want? Hello. You are wasting my time. Wasting your time how? Yes, because the Quran says, the Quran says, the Quran says, the Quran says, no, Allah telling them what to say. Allah, Allah, Allah yeah. saying to them, they say we believe. He, they say we believe. Allah saying to them, Allah saying to them, say, say we believe not, but we are Muslims. Allah telling them what to say. So Allah saying to them, say we we are not the believers, but we are Muslim. He is telling them to say we are Muslims. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm trying to say. That, uh, which is higher, belief or submission? Which is higher? Abdul, how you can submit without believing? <laughs> And how you can how you can be su submitted without belief? So you submit yourself to, to anything? Like if you go in the street and somebody says, "Submit yourself to me," you submit, or you believe in what we submit. People believe without submission. Okay, okay, take care, take care. I don't know what people in Nigeria were were eating. I mean, in your area, but obviously you need to change your diet. People believe without submission, submission without belief. Anyone understand anything? I get, I get dizzy. I have a cross eyes now. <laughs> Do we have any Ahmadiyya here? No need to believe. I mean, what kind of religion is religion? You do not need to believe to be a Muslim, brother. Just surrender, say Shahada. That's it, brother. Very beautiful religion. You do not need to understand. You do not need to know anything. Just uh, say, you know, just say we are Muslims. Who cares if you believe or not? For this is a fraud. Muhammad, he sent them a threat, saying to them, either you convert or I will kill you. Literally. And this is in the Quran. This is all in the Quran. <clears throat> Hello? 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 If you are not a Muslim, don't call me, please. In chapter 48, verse number 16, Muhammad saying to the Arab, the Bedouin, be careful. If you don't surrender to me, I will kill you all. And then they convert to save their life. And then they start saying, we are believers. Muhammad said to them, Allah said to me, don't say we are believers, you are a fraud like me. You don't believe, say we are Muslims. Why the mother of Muhammad, she gave her son to midwife, and I think you mean the nursing women? Uh, I believe that all those stories are kind of fabrication, have nothing to do with the... I believe Muhammad was not the son of that family. He is not the son of the family they claim. This is why his family, he's like an adopted son. Uh, they rejected him and they tried to dump him in the desert. And he was suffering from a very bad illness. Uh, you know, uh, it had, this illness had many names in English. Like when somebody have a, uh, like suddenly an attack in his nerve system, he fell down in the ground, he faint or he shake or he go, you know, like, a, so he had the exact same thing since he was a kid. And this is what Islamic books all confirming that. Even when the angel, claim angel, uh, uh, he came to Muhammad, you will see that Muhammad, he went to his wife and he had the same symptoms of such a 
illness, epilepsy. And at that time, if a person have epilepsy, they believe he have a black magic on him. And actually, this is what, if you notice in the hadith, you will find that the Muslims agree that their prophet was bewitched by black magic. Actually, everything Muhammad he said, proving to us that Muhammad is a, is a mentally ill person, the same as uh, this guy, uh, uh, Khalifa, sorry, uh, 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 Ghulam. Look at this guy. I mean, this is a prophet of God. Prophet of God <coughs> teaching Muslims when they have to stop praying. Don't leave the prayer until you see the until you hear the thought and you smell it. I mean, this is a prophet of God. Yeah, 29 this uh, dislike from the Ahmadiyya, yet not even one of them will call us. And don't forget to download the video, because I'm sure the Ahmadiyya, they will try to take it down. <coughs> and by the way, Ahmadiyya, they share many things with the Muslim Sunni. As an example, they believe that Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he have legs. Sorry, uh, Allah have legs. He sit in the chair. He have hands. But uh, you know they are saying his hands are not like our our, our hands, but the same as the Muslim Sunni. <coughs> hmm. Any Ahmadiyya? Hmm. I'm really disappointed. I thought Ahmadiyya they will be calling, defending their cult, and they will say to us something we don't know. Anyone? <clears throat> Nobody. Nobody. Total silence. Well, silence is a good sign. I mean, it look like they agree, you know. They cannot find it. I mean, they cannot fight it. So we agree. We have to agree. <clears throat> Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, the one who claimed to be the Messiah, he died because of severe diarrhea. Actually, I believe Muhammad himself, he died because of severe diarrhea too. If you remember the hadith where it says, that Muhammad he died because of the poison he ate in Khaybar. You will notice that Muhammad is suffering badly, and there is many reference of him suffering, and in, like internal pain in his body. And most likely it is in his stomach and whatever connected 
I mean, the organ inside his his uh, his his, uh, his body. Uh, but food usually food go through certain area and will land in the stomach for sure. There's no other place for the for the food to land as a start. So when you eat a poison, the first place the poison go through is your stomach and then your stomach will observe that poison. And then you will find that Muhammad he is saying that the food uh, 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 Aisha is saying here in the element of his death Muhammad saying he used to say and you notice here it says he used to say not once not twice which means Muhammad was suffering badly from a severe pain and obviously this kind of pain will accompany with diarrhea especially it is in the stomach uh, his his uh, his uh, his stomach is damaged his body is damaged and Muhammad is suffering uh, we have uh, Ahmadiyya person I think he looked like Ahmadiyya for me let us see <coughs> hmm he just text me it says unavailable let us ask him are you Ahmadiyya Hello? Yeah. Hello. Yes, my friend. Are you an Ahmadiyya person? Yeah, how are you? I'm fine. Are you an Ahmadiyya? You are, we are live on air. No, no, I'm Sadiq Simul. Okay, so what are you? Are you a Muslim or what? No, I'm a Christian. So why are you calling me, my friend? We said Ahmadiyya call me only. <laughs> I'm a Christian, just asking you how are you? Alright, thank you very much. I'm very fine. Thank you. Please don't call me unless you I, I got excited. I thought okay we got a we got a we got a Ahmadiyya now. We got a fish. It turned to be not a fish. Oh boy. Any Ahmadiyya wanna call us? Any a true believer in the Ahmadiyya belief is willing to call us. If there is something wrong in your belief, you don't want us to, de to talk about. And by the way, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, not only he claimed that he is the Messiah, he claimed to be Krishna. <coughs> He said, there's a book, it's called uh, the book of al qaidaniyya the Holy, uh, the Memory or Tazkara. And he said in page number 459, I am a Krishna. I am Krishna, the one who the Aryun are waiting for to appear these days. So is he the Messiah or is he Krishna? What else he is? He is Mary for three years. He is the Messiah and he is a Krishna. Anyone? Nobody? It's very disappointing to know that Krishna he died because of diarrhea according to Ahmad Mirza Ghulam. He is Zeus, maybe he's Venus. Maybe he's Trump, you never know. He might come back as a Trump. <laughs> Things can happen these days, everything is possible. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like to hear more. And by the way, this is not my major channel. This is one of my backup channel. The best way always to find where I'm going to be live is in patreon.com slash Christian Prince or of my page in Facebook or in minds.com 
or in Instagram. <clears throat> just to let you know. This is just one a small channel I have. This is why it have only 26,000. Any Muhammadan? Uh, I mean any Ahmadiyya? Today we want to give our time to the Ahmadiyya so they can, you know, explain to us why they believe in this man to be the Messiah. I mean, this guy, he could not heal himself. He could not heal his family. He could not heal anything. He's the same as Muhammad. The Muslim, they say, Muhammad, he have kids. I believe he have no kids. But they say he have kids, but his kids die one after one, according to them. And yet Muhammad could not bring any of them back to life. When the Arab, they keep saying to him, why you don't have a miracle? He said, well, if Allah wants to give a miracle, he can, but you will not believe anyway. <laughs> Chapter 2, verse 118. Tons of verses, by the way, all over the Quran. The poor Arab, they keep saying to Muhammad, okay, listen, Abdul, you are a prophet of Allah, as you claim. Can you give us a sign? Just give us a sign. We will believe in you, no problem. What Muhammad he said to them? There are heart alike. We have made the signs clear for people who are certain. People who are certain, you make sign for them? But those are certain. They believe you already. Do not need a sign. The one who need the sign is the one who need it. <laughs> and then he said after that, the Jews and the Christians will not approve you unless you follow their greed. This is the most stupid comment ever. Statement. Because the Jews don't agree, don't allow people to join them unless they are children of the Jews. You don't convert to Judaism. If you find the Jews are doing that today, because Judaism, I mean, most of them became a Christian, and they found themselves, they are disappearing. So they are accepting people to become Jew. Like you find some rabbis going to Philippines, as an example, trying to make some Christians convert to Judaism, trying to fool those poor Filipinos. But when you say that Christians and the Jews will not approve you unless you, fo you follow their belief, that is a stupid statement. Because the Muslim, they claim that Musa was a Jew. And what the Jews are doing is not what God he said. If you remember, the that, and then many after him, like Nimi and Fifi and Siuso, they said, not a single Jew, not a single Jew believe in the Trinity. Guys, do you remember? As an example, Nimi, when he was debating uh, David Wood, not a single Jew believe in the Trinity. Well, is it just your Quran, you idiot, saying the Jews worship a son of God, his name is Uzair? <laughs> So he accused this idiot that his God is a liar and Jews don't believe in the Son of God. He said that the Quran say no, they do. They do. <clears throat> not a single Jew, brothers and sisters, not a single Jew from the time of Christ until now you will find him believe in except anything except the oneness of God. Okay, but the Quran says something different, so the Quran is a lie. <clears throat> Any Abdul? We have tons of things to speak about this cult, the Ahmadiyya, but it, it is it is very stupid cult, it's very funny, it's very dummy, but they can still can fool you because they are very well trained in attacking Christianity very well trained and in order to prove something for you they don't use their books because they don't want you to read their books <clears throat> any Mohammedan and guys imagine imagine the the Mirza Ghulam he said in his book he said Allah he sent to this nation the promised Messiah who is better from the first Messiah. 
I thought you are the first Messiah who came back to India. <laughs> How this guy, he claimed to be the Messiah, and then he says that Allah, he sent him as a promised Messiah better from the previous Messiah. But aren't you the one who claimed to be the previous Messiah himself who just came from Jerusalem to India? Are you a new Messiah? I mean, what kind of a drugs this guy is taking? This is in his book, it's called Tazkara, page number 382. Any Abdul? Uh, actually, any Ahmadiyya? <coughs> No one? The friend of uh, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, in his book, uh, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, in his book, he said, once my friend, he advised me to take hashish. <laughs> Which is good for diabetes. The guy, he had diabetes too. In the top of all the diseases he have, he have diabetes. And he's the Messiah. And he said, and there is no harm in taking cocaine for the purpose of medication i said to him thank you very much for your dear advice but if you are used to take cocaine i am afraid that people they will not accept the first messiah he was taking <laughs> wine and the second messiah is taking cocaine <laughs> Oh, hold on. He's telling his friend, but it's not right because now the first Messiah he was taking wine and the second Messiah is taking cocaine and heroin. <laughs> and that's a good point, brother. That's a good point. Oh boy. Okay, but he but now he admit that he have diabetes. Hmm. And yet his God is not and he is the Messiah. Alright. <coughs> and then later Mirza Ghulam he made a medicine called uh, made from cocaine it's called uh, uh, the vaccine of God or God the vaccine hmm. <sighs> any Ahmadiyya? No Ahmadiyya? Nobody? Hmm. I'm looking at Skype. Skype is dead. There's nobody. Not even one single Muhammadan Ahmadiyya. Um, let us see here. There is a person, his name is Adham. And he is a Christian. He started getting Ahmad Mirza Ghulam busted. And imagine Allah, he sent Ahmad Mirza Ghulam Quran to refute Adham. <laughs> and then when Adham he died, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam he said, Praise be to Allah, I never been be happy as today after this Adham he died. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you are the Messiah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh. 
I mean, the stories, the stories of this guy is really beyond stupidity. Um, look what he said about the coming of the Messiah. But yet he claimed to be the Messiah. Believe it or not, I mean, he says all the nation agree that, uh, according to the authentic hadith, that Isa he is in the sky and he is alive. And he is going to come down at the end of the time and he will kill the pig and he will break that cross and he will kill the false messiah and he will be the just and then <clears throat> if this is true so who are you you see guys the stupidity if you are saying that the Messiah, he, if you accept that the Messiah, he will come in the judgment day. So how he come now? Or let us say a hundred years ago. He was accepting what Muhammad, he said <clears throat> in this hadith. Let us find it. See this hadith? So Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he agree with it. Okay, if you agree with it that the Messiah will descend against you in the judgment day, and he will be judged for the mankind, how come you did not become the judge, and how come the end of the time did not come? Because according to this hadith, the coming of the Messiah second time is going to be the last one. There is no more coming. And this will happen only in the judgment day. So you came in the wrong time. Too much early. <laughs> and by the way, here, there is there is something stupid, Muhammad, he said. Anyone notice that? I will, put the, I will put the hate in the screen. One of you tell me, where is the mistake, Muhammad, he said, proving that he is a false prophet? Anyone notice here? In this uh, in this uh, statement of Muhammad, where Muhammad he got himself busted? Anyone? Let us see who of you will help me. Where in this story Muhammad he got himself busted? <clears throat> I know that the video take time for you to arrive. Anyone? Where Muhammad here, he got himself busted in this prophecy. This is a prophecy about the Messiah when he will come. Anyone notice something wrong in what Muhammad said? Shortly. The fact is not only shortly. It says, Liyushikna. Liyushikna in Arabic means it's almost he's here. It's not only shortly. It's like he's coming now. So the liar, he said 1400 years ago, that the Messiah almost down. Descend between you people, you people. He's talking to people who they are alive between him, in front of him. Do you see it? And yeah, the Messiah will come. <clears throat> well, here it's very hard to, to explain to you without sound effect and like some background. I don't know if I can use that. Let me see. Uh, <clears throat> We have some to use some education tools, you know, but I'm not sure. Whistle. Let us see. No, not this one. I'm looking for, you know, the, the whistle of the cowboy? You know, the, the cowboy whistle? So what Muhammad saying that the Messiah, he will come in the judgment day. And the Messiah, he's going to face, face the enemy. 
it's hard to explain to you without uh, let us do this brothers and sisters the son of Mary very soon he will be here he will break the cross and he will kill the pig commercial break if you have a problem with pigs and you want to kill them call us right now we have the right rifle for you you can shoot the pig with pimp a uh, pent pent a uh, gun and he will die immediately even if he's a big 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 back to the topic he will kill the pig he will stand in front of the pig and he will say to him you pig and the pig he will say to him oh messiah what you did why you are shooting me I'm not even the pig I am his cousin <laughs> <laughs> the Messiah is coming from behind the seven galaxies to shoot a pig. Oh no no, short shoot. The Messiah will use a sword, you know, the old days started like <laughs> so the pig he will have a sword, the Messiah will have a sword like and the like do you think the pig will be able to cut the, like, like at least cut the the sleeves of, of, of the Messiah when he's fighting? <laughs> story I mean this is the Messiah for you he's coming Allah is sending him to kill the pig why I mean who is this pig it's a pig I mean how silly how stupid that he will come to kill the pig and he will break the cross so all the electric column we see in the street he will break them too because all of them they are cross in every street in the Islamic country you have a cross in the front of your house Big, a huge cross. Without it, you don't have electricity. Don't you? Are you going to break it all too? And what this problem with the pig, Mr. Pig? He will kill the pig? So Mirza Ghulam, he agreed with this, but Mirza Ghulam did not come in the judgment day. And here Muhammad, he says shortly, but Mirza Ghulam, he come, you know, 1400 years after, <laughs> oh boy <clears throat> you know stupidity is really amazing I don't know what to say about this Ahmad Mirza Ghulam I am disappointed I thought we will get some uh, Ahmadiyya who they are willing to call us so we can laugh more because it's going to be more funny if you hear it from them but I believe strongly they avoid talking to me because they knew that is going to be, they will not be able to fix it, but in, instead they will make it horrible if they call. Otherwise, we have 28 dislike from Ahmadiyya people. How come none of them is calling? You know what I mean? They will not call because the more they call, the more we will show reference. And we will get them busted from their books. Why you don't call me to examine my knowledge about your cult? Or to correct me, baby? Or to explain to me how your Messiah, he died because of diarrhea? By the way, what happened to his diarrhea? I hope you did not throw it away. And sometimes, I find it amazing or I'm using maybe I'm using better when they try to refute us and they make such a claim he, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam he did not die because of cholera he died because of complication arising from severe diarrhea and this is your official website getting us busted your claimed Messiah died because 
complication arising from severe diarrhea. Who is saying that? You, Ahmadiyya, you saying that. And look what they continue saying. No doubt, no doubt by suffering from diarrhea would have led to his weakness and his eventual death. Uh. The weakness of your Messiah was because of diarrhea. So where is Allah? I mean, nobody killed him. This guy, literally, he died because of his... Uh, <clears throat> so I'm really convinced how they refute us. Who in the world want to believe in someone he claimed to be the Messiah, he died because of diarrhea? Just be honest with yourself. I mean, how silly that statement is. When a bunch of Christians, they come to his door and they brought him someone who is blind, someone who cannot walk, someone who cannot uh, uh, talk, and they said to him, okay, all those disabled people, you know, uh, if you are the Messiah, do what the Messiah do. He closed the door, he get in, he hide. And then later we find that the person, he had diabetes. This is, this is their books, by the way. Their books saying that Ahmadiyya, uh, Ahmad Mirza Ulam himself, his friend advised him to take hashish and cocaine for his diabetes. And later, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he made cocaine, or let us say drugs, as a, 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 a vaccine, he called it the vaccine of God. The vaccine of God. For sure, the cocaine will make you have, uh, this is a vaccine of God, you will be very high, you will, you will be high to God himself. <laughs> Again, how many of you want this website? How many? But by the way, it took me time to find this website, honestly. Like after I, I, I decided, to, because I received an email from one of you, and uh, uh, he told me uh, I saw somebody from in, in Puerto Rico and they opened Islamic Center for Ahmadiyya, and they are trying to, to deceive Christians in Puerto Rico. And that's why I, I decided to talk about this topic. This is the website. Please don't forget to save it because it's going to take you forever to find something approved. This is their official website. They can't deny it. This is their website. I'm not using a website uh, from people who they are against Ahmadiyya, no. You see, if you go to the main page, let us go to the main page. Hold on, give me a second. Menu, where is the home? Home. Okay, this is this is their main page. If you click in the same in the same website I gave you, <clears throat> this is the news now. This is their caliphate, by the way, the guy who he wearing this hat. The head of Ahmadiyya Muslim community urged Ahmadiyya Muslim Ahmadi Murzi, uh, girls, women to stand to defend and defend Islam of Islam. <laughs> That's a good one. Head of Ahmadiyya Muslim community urged Muslims, youth, living in the West to keep hold for their religious value. What is your religious value exactly? Actually, I challenged the Muslim Ahmadiyya to tell me what is your value? And where we can find the books of your value? What is that? In the Quran of Ahmad Mirza Ghulam? Who is a Muslim would like to call me and show me the value of Ahmadiyya from his book, the books of Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, the Quran which Allah gave him? Is that the one who insulted the Christians? Called them filthy? Called the Jewish filthy? Is that the one who insulted Jesus? Saying that he can do nothing like what I do? Which is your value? Any Abdul? I 
And by the way, he don't only claim that he is the Messiah, he claimed to be his Isa and the Messiah at the same time. And he is the last prophet. In one of his books he said, you should know that the promised Messiah in the book of Allah, he is not Isa, the son of Mary, the one who came with the gospel and the servant of the law of Moses, as many they thought of the ignorant, from those who they are stupid and crook and sinner, but it is the last of the messengers for this nation, which is Mirza Ghulam. And this is in the book, it's called Khutbah il Hamiya, page number 309. So if this guy claimed to be the Messiah, how he is not the Messiah? I mean, guys, anyone understand? This guy, he claimed to be the Messiah. And now he is saying that the Messiah, the promised Messiah, is not the Messiah, the son of Mary. <laughs> but he claimed that he was Mary too. And he is the Messiah who did not die in Jerusalem. What kind of a drugs this man is taking? What do you think? <clears throat> Any uh, Ahmadiyya? All right, look like we, we, we are not lucky today with the Ahmadiyya. Uh, we will be back live on air again tomorrow in the morning, same time. Uh, but I might go back again afternoon today, I, if I have time. Okay? And if you have a question for me about certain topic, if nobody did, I mean, we did not speak about it before, uh, in the comment section, try to leave your comment and tell me if there's a topic you think is good to talk about, I will be happy to do it if it is something we did not speak about yet. Any Ahmadiyya would like to call us? Last call, Mayday, Mayday. Anyone? And by the way, if you are speaking a person who speaks Serbian, Polish, Russian, Indonesian, Malay, what else? Anything else? Albanian. We posted those books all for free. All right. <clears throat> uh, you can find the links in Patreon, and the admins here can help you if you are looking for them. Uh, and now we have people working translating my books to Romanian. Some working in the Chinese. Some there are. I mean, all languages. God, God is amazing. And for sure, we have an Amazon, we have in Dutch, we have in Spanish, 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 <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> That's Muhammad speaking with me, brother. <laughs> Quran. So Spanish, not the Spanish, uh, Spanish, Dutch, German, English, French. Uh, I mean, God is good. Our books is all over in many, many, many languages. And I cannot wait until, uh, honestly, until my book is published in Chinese. That would be amazing more than a billion what billion more way more chinese speaking people they will get my book i cannot wait for that day <clears throat> so uh, we know we don't have an italian well you can volunteer and translate it to italian if you want contact me contact me in, in patreon if you like to, if you can translate to italian uh yeah actually the reason no muslim can debate me because i eat spanish every day brother Papai. Papai is my, you know, my uncle Papai, he told me to eat Spanish. By the way, do you know one of the advice of Muhammad that garlic is against Allah? Which makes sense, brother. Muhammad, he forbid anyone who eat garlic to enter the mosque. 
And remember, the Muslim they pray five times a day. That means you will never be able to enter the mosque if you eat garlic. Now, why the garlic is an enemy for Allah? Because garlic they offend the angels. Garlic, not only garlic. Let us see. All those. Anyone here like to eat leeks? Who eat leek? The Messenger of Allah said, "Whoever eats this plant, the first he said garlic, and then he said garlic on, uh, onion and leeks. Let him not to approach us in our masjid, which means more. For the angels are offended by which offend mankind. I mean, have you ever heard of angels of God? They got offended by garlic." And they are offended by leeks and onion. Jibril, can you talk to me? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Come on, Jibril, talk to me. Mm -mm. Come on. What happened, Jibril? Why you don't want to talk to me? We are always friends. Do you remember when I took you to Disneyland? Mm -hmm. So, why you don't want to talk to me? Mm -hmm. Jibril, say something. Come on. Okay, Jibril, if you cannot talk, can you write something? Mm. Okay, write for me, because I want to know why you are angry from me. Why do you want to talk to me? Okay, this is a pen and this is a paper. What? You are upset because I ate onion yesterday? Are you serious, Jibril? Mm -hmm. So you want to talk to me now because I ate onion yesterday? Mm -hmm. Okay, but... What about the day before? Oh, he's writing something. I ate garlic. So you're upset because I ate garlic too. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so onion and garlic make you get offended and you will not talk to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, why last week, not this week, the week before, you stopped talking to me for almost two weeks? Write something. Hello? 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 Okay, you have a bad voice. Bad connection. <clears throat> so, Jibril, he just wrote for me that he is upset because I ate leeks. May Allah leak you. What kind of religion, the angels of it, they get offended by leeks and onion and garlic and those are very useful plants anyone can tell me oh i think i know i'm receiving a call but i'm not sure from who I don't know, should I answer? The, the number is dangerous. It says Malaysia. Okay, let me answer. Christian Prince, I'm going to get you busted. Is that a nag? I thought you by now you are asleep. First of all, when you talk, I don't sleep. And I'm going to tell everybody that you are a liar. How am I I'm a liar? First of all, you are talking about garlic. And proven scientifically that garlic is not healthy. Garlic is not healthy since when? First of all, you're not a doctor. Uh, yeah, I know you are a doctor. You are an idiot doctor. Christopher Prent, if you insult me, I will insult you. Okay, I will not going to insult you. Sorry for saying the word idiot because the idiot will sue me for saying calling you idiot. Christopher Prent, it's proven scientifically that I gave God to eat garlic. Okay, what God have to do with garlic? Explain it to us. Okay, let us say you have a beautiful woman next to you. Thank God, I don't have any beautiful women next to me, otherwise I will not be here live on air. I will be making babies, uh, uh, Zach and I. Christian Prince, you are very rude and you are very dirty. Uh, uh, okay, you, you got the point there, Zach and I. So, if you have a woman, see the beautiful next to you. Are you going to eat garlic? Uh, <clears throat> no. Exactly. I got you busted. So, you don't eat garlic next to Allah. But Allah is God. And, I mean, He is the one who made garlic. So, so why Allah he made garlic? Allah made garlic so people who they are bad people like you, they will eat it. And then nobody can eat it to them. 
and that's why you're alone and you don't have a woman she's beautiful next to you are you saying to me Zach and Mike, you have a beautiful woman next to you exactly can we see you are very rude and you are not perfectly you know what not perfectly perfect but all okay so you are saying I don't have a beautiful woman next to me because I don't I'm eating garlic exactly so I'll let advice in the woodland okay what about leeks uh, uh, Zakir, uh, uh, <clears throat> what? Why, if we eat leeks, that will offend Allah? Okay, first of all, if you eat leek, you are going to do farting. Really? You fart if you eat leek? Exactly. So you go to the mosque, you bend over, and that will squeeze your stomach, and then boom. Boom to where? To the bad person behind you. So leek is very offending. But the hadith says it's offend the angels. Exactly, because the angel he will be next to you. But you said I'm going to do boom behind me, not next to me. Exactly, there's an angel next to the guy who is behind you, so the angel is behind you too. So, like you are saying that the angels of Allah, they are not, they, they are like they don't have any weapon anti leaks farting. <laughs> Christian Prince, you are very rude. Okay, what about onion? What onion will do to Allah? I mean, how in the world Allah is offended because of onion? First of all, the hadith did not say Allah offended by onion. It says the angel. Okay, but the angels are like angels. I mean, and this is just an onion. Angel of Allah, they are offended by many things. By pigs, by dogs, by black dog, by onion, and by leeks, and by garlic. And there is a hadith we discovered lately. It's called by Christian Prince. Okay, well, it makes sense. I mean, this God, he have a, a lot of phobia. So Allah, he have a phobia from garlic, phobia from onion, and phobia from leeks. Did you ever ever heard about weak leek, uh, can I? I know about weak leek. And actually now, you got me an idea. I think Allah, he forbid us from eating leek, so we will not leak email like Fifi. He leaked the email of Yasser Kadi. Uh, but this is not the same leaking. That Fifi, he leaked the email of Yasser Kadi about... <clears throat> The Quran have holes in the narratives, uh, but this is this is the plan. This is not leaking email. Christian Prince, your English is funny, and your Arabic is funny, and your Urdu is more funny. And now you don't understand the difference between leaks. Leak is leak. Your roof is leaking. The plant is leaking, and everything is leaking. Uh, by the way, I heard that your passenger of Allah he used to leak too. This is true, but this was very thoughtful, very easy, because they put the black magic on him and he was leaking, and he used to wear a diaper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Zach and I uh, thank you for calling me. I appreciate your call. Christian Prince, I'm not going to hang up. Uh -huh. So, what, what, what do you want to say else? I'm going to get you busted. How you want to get me busted? It says in the hadith that you cannot enter the method if you eat those plant. But they didn't say you cannot eat at home. Uh -huh. But if you eat them at home, for sure. I mean, I mean, nobody, nobody will eat garlic and the mosque right they will eat at home you get the point there but i have to tell you that you can eat garlic at home but the angels are accompanying you at home too right exactly so garlic is offending the angels exactly that's mean it doesn't matter if it's at the mosque or at home you cannot eat garlic forever in your life exactly and that's mean you will die by diabetes, you idiot, and your cholesterol will be high because garlic and those plants are very useful. Exactly. Okay, okay, Zach and Nick. I think you are stuck with the word exactly today. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you, Zach and Nick. Take care. I have to hang up on you because you will not hang up as you said. <clears throat> Why does God, he got offended? I mean, how shallow, how stupid this religion is. When Muhammad, he said in the hadith, you know, when you pray, shaitan, he come from your, and take care from your back door. I mean, was Muhammad thinking? Or he is just an idiot speaking to a bunch of idiots around him. Shaitan will take care from your back door and he will not stop unless he straight the hair and he take it and he make you fart. Can this be true? And if this is true, I challenge those who YouTubers, Muslims, who make YouTube to defend Islam, to take a selfie for their bum, 
show us how much lose of hair they are suffering from because shaitan he will do it to you each time you pray if shaitan he take five hair at least a day how many hair you have there <laughs> and shaitan will not stop taking hair from your bum until he hear it and he smell it what a religion so we notice at the end of the day that Ahmad Mir Zoghlam is a foolish man, same as Muhammad. Both they speak to a naive community of poor people trying to mislead them. But how in the world, in the time of we are educated and we have degrees and we go to school, in the age of the internet, we believe in both? How in the world, somebody he is an Ahmadiyya, he opened his website, which is the official website of Ahmadiyya. And by the way, I think they will take it off. Just wait, the Ahmadiyya now, they will report to their, they will say to them, what are you doing? What are you doing? You are posting here in our official website that Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he died because of a severe diarrhea. You need to take it off. Many Islamic websites, I show the reference from their website, they take it down after I make videos. The doctor issued a death certificate, but there was no mention of him dying by cholera, as alleged, or dying in the toilet. The doctor he will he will, he will say where he died. <laughs> Instead, they are they they recorded it is complication arising from severe diarrhea. No doubt, no doubt, brothers and sisters, that suffering from diarrhea it would lead have led to the weakness and the eventual death but doesn't mean that he died while he is in the toilet this is the Ahmadiyya community defending their messiah false messiah they are trying to prove to us that he did not die in the toilet why? because they found him in the top of his poopoo he fall in the top of his poopoo this is how he died so not only he died because of diarrhea he died in the top of his diarrhea and with this, I want to say thank you guys for being here. I will try to be back again, maybe later if I can. If not, we we'll see you tomorrow. Leave a comment. Tell me what topic you like to talk about. If I find it interesting, we will go for it. May the Lord bless you all. Very disappointed of the Ahmadiyya community who did not call us. We thought we, they would call us and they would prove us wrong. But it looked like they agree and they have nothing to say. They knew if they call us, that will not make any good point for them. In fact, we will show more and more reference. We will show how stupid this cult is. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. We are happy for our sister who called us. She was Ahmadiyya and she became a Christian. Uh, God bless her. And we need to mention here that the sister she mentioned that she did read the book of Nabil Qurashi. God bless his soul. And her, the book of, of a brother Nabil was the reason for her to leave Ahmadiyya cult and to accept Christ. So blessing to his soul, blessing to our sister, and this is why we encourage all of you that you don't know you will save the life of who, even after you die, when you do the fruit of the Lord. Do what you need to do, so you can save people, and then the Lord one day will say to you, you save this and this and this, your life was not a waste. People who have no fruits, they need to be worried about what we are doing in this life. What is our accomplishment? There's many things we need to accomplish, but what about the most important thing, our salvation? Our salvation, it should be the top important thing to accomplish. And salvation in Christianity earned by saving others, not by focusing on yourself. And today we hear, we heard from this call from the lady who called us actually I do not know the name of uh, Nabil book the one she mentioned this is the first time I hear about it uh, I know he have a book but I don't know what the name I know a book it's called I seek Allah I found Jesus something like this but she mentioned different books she was reading and it was the reason for her to leave the cult of Muhammad and the cult of Ahmad Mirza Ghulam. so bless those who do the good work bless those who support it bless those who translate the videos 
plus those who translate my books, plus those who post again. Because by your post, by your translation, by your help, we are working as a team, serving the Lord, loving the Muslims, helping them to leave such a stupid cult. This is literally a stupid cult. Doesn't fit to be even considered as a cult. It's so stupid. And sometimes you feel like, I mean, very, very crazy. I mean, how, how in the world a human being can believe in this? How a human being can be so shallow to believe in someone like Ahmad Mirza Ghulam or someone like Muhammad, the prophet of farting? Al Khomeini, he said to the Muslim Sunni, you have a huge library in the books of bathroom. Why? Because they have thousands and thousands of books, not about Allah, about what happened to you in the bathroom. That is Islam. But Al Khomeini is no better. He have books to teach you how to have sexual relationship with the children, how to molest them. He is no better. But you know, they are two religion fighting each other. And Ahmadiyya is no different. They try to use names you use, like Mary, Jesus, Gospel, but they have nothing to do with it. In fact, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam is a very antichrist person. And we prove it. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. This is your brother Christian Prince. Wish you a good day. Happy Sunday. And may the Lord bless you all and keep you in good health and wealth. Take care.